Hello and welcome to this afternoon taste challenge. This is for an upcoming date. I will, uh, I'll just let you know at the top of the hour that not um, 6 p.m. Central, but 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, they're doing um, English IPAs. I went to Walmart and Total Wine. No, Walmart and Trader Joe's, sorry, and neither one of them had Goose Island because I was going to get probably a single of Goose Island IPA and bring it as an English style IPA for multi Monday. But neither one of them had it. It was really strange. So I'm going to skip that. I'll just watch the uh, the Braves and Mets baseball game. Well, that'll, that'll be interesting. Michael Hill says, hello, and thank you for this taste challenge. You're welcome. You will. Thank you for watching. What's going on? Doing a taste challenge for Brandy. Chattio says, you're making me thirsty. Chattio, you congratulations on your third anniversary. I saw you were doing a live video, but I was listening to a radio show, and um, then I had to listen to, had to, right? You like that? Had to listen to a whiskey uh, taste tasting for uh, Johnny Walker Red. I didn't have to, but I have some backlog on my uh, to watch later list. And uh, if I don't get on it, it just keeps growing and um, I don't want it to keep growing. And so that's why I don't usually join live hangouts and all of that. It's not a sign of disrespect. It's just trying to catch up on the uh, video reviews. I have you streaming on my TV you're on TV, says Tyler, man. So I'm on TV. That is very odd. They did not have Goose Island. I thought it was very strange, you know. Thanks, man. You helped me keep going. <laughs> I help you keep going. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so we have two interesting products. I got to stand up for a little bit. I'm tired of sitting. Although I was standing on my feet for eight hours at work. So I'll be sitting soon again. All right. We have from 1874, no joke, well, not this actual Bob Toll, but eight, don't forget, y'all, multi-Monday, eight o'clock Eastern time tonight, and then Wednesday night is examine any fruit-flavored beer, any fruit-flavored beer, 7.20 to 7.30 Eastern Daylight Time, or 6.20 Central, 4.20 Pacific, uh, any fruit-flavored beer, no artificial flavoring, you know, actual fruit or fruit flavor. Okay, that'll work. Ale, lager, don't matter. I mean, you can find a fruit flavor beer, right? Here's Brandy de Jerez. This is from Jerez, Spain. Established, the company now was established in 1730. Pedro Domecq. But this Solera Reserva is uh, from um, 1874. All right. I have never seen it sold in my town. There says Pedro Domecq. Pedro Domecq was an immigrant from France to Spain. So, uh, yeah, he developed brandy in Spain. Uh, and on the back, it's got this official denomen, you know, this official thing, Brandy de Jerez, part of the Brandy de Jerez Trade Association government enforced. Thanks, me. Oh, does fruit drinks include MD 2020? Well, it has to be beer. So if you got the MD2020 um, spiked fruit punch, it would work because they're made with natural flavors. Tangerine, the pineapple, which to me tasted like lemon, but probably was my fault. And then the uh, blue raspberry. They're not artificially flavored. So that would work. I don't think anybody's going to find those. But uh, Does Corona with a lime count as fruit flavored? No, it has to be in the can or bottle already flavored, not you adding fruit to it. Ronald Acuna should be back for the Braves tonight. Yeah. It didn't look like he hurt his ankle too bad, says Sinai. I mean, I'm saying this too, Sinai. Jeep and Foodie says, ever see Torres brandy in your area? Torres. Torres. No, I haven't. Um, now, the Torres family is pretty well known in uh, St. Bernard Parish, Torres. Nunez, Campo, a lot of Spaniards there. Louisiana has a lot more Spanish than you would imagine. Because people think Louisiana, they automatically think in what? French, right? But uh, actually, sp 
Remember, Louisiana was a French territory. Uh, what am I saying? Louisiana was a Spanish territory for 40 years. 39 technically, technically but it was actually 40, over 40, because they had to transfer the territory. In the, but um, So we have a town named Gonzales. We have a town named Galvez. We had a many, many Spanish governors, like Antonio de Anzaga y Amazaga and Bernardo de Galvez. I will get an apricot blonde ale tomorrow. It is brewed with apricot puree. That sounds good. Drinking a Heineken, says Tyler. That sounds good. Would you like an MLB team in New Orleans? Do you think the city could support it? I would like it, but I doubt they could support it because you've already got the Saints pro football and the Pelicans pro basketball. Three major league sports. I mean, you're only looking at a million people in the whole metro area. I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. It would have happened in 1972 when the, or could have happened in the late 60s when the Kansas City Athletics were looking to move. Their owner wanted to come to New Orleans, and he said, you're going to have the Superdome, which is going to be a multi-purpose multi sports arena. It could handle football, basketball, and baseball and all of that, and it's going to be state-of-the-art, and we're, you know, it's still being used. And the city of New Orleans said, we definitely want the A's coming, but the dome is not going to be ready till 72, and it actually wasn't ready till 75. It took longer to build than they thought. And the owner of the A's said, no, I, I, uh, I need to leave now, because he was trying to get from under a lawsuit in, in Kansas City, and uh, they said, well, it's just not ready. And so he went to Oakland. Their Coliseum was ready. It was it was already built. Had the Oakland Raiders had been used in it since 1966. It was brand new. So uh he went there and then he regretted it later. He told somebody, why did I come to this city? You know. So, but anyway, I don't think it's gonna ever happen, but I could be wrong. I think they would support Major League Baseball. They're not too interested in minor league. We've had two minor league three minor league teams in New Orleans, and they all left. We had the original Pelicans. They left. The second Pelicans, which I, I remember when they played in the Superdome, they left. And the and then the Zephyrs slash Baby Cakes, they left. So, I mean, people just not interested in minor league. They're interested in college baseball and professional, you know, major league. But the minors just – they don't want to do it. Okay, uh – uh, the A's are looking for a new home. They are. Oakland refuses to build a new stadium. I don't think they were refusing to build it necessarily that they can't agree on the terms. Yeah, hopefully the A's move to the south. There's a massive need for it. The Astros probably hope that New Orleans never gets a team because a lot of New Orleanians go to the Astros games. It's only a five-hour drive from here. And uh, – the Astros are on the radio here in New Orleans on a local station. They've always been since 1962. They've always had Astros games on the radio now. All right. So Fundador bottled in Illinois, interestingly. Oh, I'm sorry. Retraction. Produced and bottled in Jerez de Frontera, Spain, and imported by a company in Deerfield, Illinois. Okay, forget that. Man, the price I got, the price I got, I got this for $13, true story. Now, are you going to find this for $13? Uh, pretty sure you're not, but I was at Savannah Discount. They had it for $13. I bought it. Oh, yeah. Now, I mean, you might get it for $18, you know, but I don't think you're going to get it for $13. Now, it uses the Solera method. It means what? It could never have an age statement. No Solera product could have an age statement. Because what they're doing is they have a rack of barrels. They might be like 10 high. And every so often they'll open the top barrel and dump some of the liquor in the the next barrel, the nine, number nine barrel. H however many they got high, you know, and then eight and then seven. So the bottom barrel, it could have brandy in there from 50 years ago. And from, you know, they just keep dumping, dumping, dumping dumping, dumping, and it goes on and on. And then the, you say, well, what about the top barrel? 
Well, they add more brandy to it, fresh brandy. So by the time it's at the bottom, it could be, you know, five to 80 years old. It could be a blend of five to 80 year old brandy, theor theoretically. And they do that a lot of times with sherry. Sherry, you'll never see a, a vintage on sherry. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll never buy sherry that'll say uh, 1999, uh, 2015, because they use that method. They just dump, they got the barrels like in a diagonal rack and they're just dumping one into the next and then to the next and to, to the next, which they claim, they say makes it better because you get older mixed with younger. And by the time the younger gets to the bottom, it's older too. So seems to work for me because I've had some sherries and I never had a bad one. <laughs> I've had a good amount of sherry. I never had a bad one. And, uh, and this Solera brandy from uh, Pedro Domecq is dynamite. Oh, good. My poor can. Well, that's pretty even. Let's see about the. Um... Oh, hell. I got to add a little bit more Ciroc. I was looking up the word. What does Ciroc mean? I don't know if it means anything. It, I couldn't find a, a translation for it. Maybe it just means brandy from Diageo. <laughs> Guinness Company. They make Guinness beer, you know, but they, they started buying out everybody. Crown Royal Canadian Whiskey, Johnny Walker Scotch, and everybody else. They started, they didn't buy out Ciroc. So if somebody tells you, you did you hear Ciroc got bought out by Diageo? No, they didn't get bought out. They were created by Diageo as a French vodka and then later brandy. Okay, so it's not a buyout. It's a creation. Come on, man. I live near the Lake County Captains, and I love that team. We brought up Jose Ramirez and Francisco Lindor. I don't mind minor league, but... Um, no, had the Zephyrs came from Denver. That's right. They were the Denver Zephyrs. And when the uh, Colorado Rockies started, they moved to New Orleans and became the Zephyrs, which worked out because they used to be an old amusement park ride at Pontchartrain Beach Amusement Park in New Orleans 10 years before the Zephyrs came. And it was called the Zephyr. And I rode on it. And it was terrifying because it was so old and rickety. Every time you rode on it, you could see it seemed like chips of wood flying, like you just didn't know if you were going to live. Uh, baseball is huge in North Carolina and Tennessee, but only Atlanta gets a team somehow. Yeah, right. I live near the Colorado Rockies, and they bring up stars who leave. <laughs> yeah, so, kind of like the Miami Marlins and the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. They get big stars, and then they leave. According to Google, the Ciroc name is a combination of two French words, crime, oh, cime, meaning peak, and rocher, meaning rock. Oh, so like a rock peak. Cheers to you, Ronnie. Yes. So like a rock peak. Okay, that makes sense. Say rock. The rock. I poured too much. I'm about to get crack. No, I'm going to go lay down and watch. So they're both dark. They're both um, amber, deep amber. Uh, so no age statement, but you know, the VS, anytime you see VS, it usually indicates very smooth or very special, but what it really means is very standard, <laughs> very young, about two year age, put it in a barrel for about two years. VSOP be about four years. That's a, that's just, just, just a, a tradition. It's not really a law. Uh, and then VXO, extra old, is about six years. So you'll notice the price will do that. The price will start low VS, VSOP, XO. Now, do they have grades higher than that? Yeah, like Napoleon, v VVSOP, very, very old, smooth, pale, you know, and very, very smooth, old, pale, and VSOP and Napoleon, and they'll have they'll have ages, but they're going to cost a lot of money. They're not going to be like thirteen dollars. 
let's look at the Fundador website. So Ciroc, there's no use looking at Ciroc website because they only have one brandy. So for the VS, Fundador Solera is their base model, which is the only one we get in America from what I can tell. Now, this is translated from Spanish so that the, the, it's going to read kind of clunky because whoever translates is not good at speaking English because they live in Spain. It says, Fundador Solera is a brandy of Jerez that, in contrast to whiskey, gin, etc., is the only one that derives from the grape and from the distillation of wine. Right, because whiskey and gin come from grain. Aged in oak cask, giving it nobility. <laughs> The Solera of this wine is established in 1874. Well, you can see that sentence is kind of like clunky. It's aging in oak barrels gives him his characteristic nobility, both in the aroma and the flavor. Well, no one, you know, it's like not the way people speak. His nobility and character. It's not his, it's its. But, you know, in, in the Latino languages, they have boy words and girl words. Uh, okay, so... Uh, Color, old gold with rainbow-hued flashes. They're shown in a beautiful snifter. Balanced clean with a fragrance of wood, seasoned with rich sherry, by rich sherry. Smooth, leaving a persistent lingering in the mouth. Now, they have some other ones here. Exclusivo. The Exclusivo... is obtained from sherry wine, specially selected for its distillation as aged by the Criaderas and Solera system in American Ocasca, 500 liters. Previously steeped with wines of Jerez, a fundador exclusive vote. Uh, I guarantee you that ain't gonna be no $13, maybe $213. There's the ultra smooth, Let's see on this website, the first Spanish brandy. They're claiming they're the first Spanish brandy. Well, I mean, I don't know the history of Spanish brandy. If they're making that claim, somebody else could sue them and win. Supremo, oh, that's the real fancy ones. The Supremo, then there's the Doble y Triple Madera. There's a Double and Triple Madera. There's a Tres Cipas, a whole nother line of Domecq brandy. There's the single collections, Fundador, Gold, Light, Double Light, Ultra Smooth, and the, the Supremo. Oh, here's the aged, the 12-year-old aged, the 15-year aged, and the 18-year aged, Oloroso Sherry Cask. I mean, you, if you run across that one, I hope you got a lot of money because you're going to need it. I really hope you got a lot of money because you're going to need it. But I'm not dealing with that. I'm dealing with the, the one I found. I got it for $13, so I'm, I'm reviewing it. Many liquors and beers to try out there, says Michael. Yeah, too many. Still Liam is clapping. How long does Brandy have to be aged? Oh, that's a good question. It doesn't have to be aged any particular amount of time. So you can get some brandies that you, you're lucky if it's two years. And they might be light but they might have added a little caramel color to them and some of them would be they'd be so rough and i'll give you a good example go to your local liquor store and get you know it's going to be the cheapest one more than likely be like nine dollars or eight dollars and it's called um hartley been on the market since 1937. you'll find some that just say hartley hartley some say Hartley VSOP, that's about six year aged. And then you'll find Hartley apple flavor, peach flavor, all kind of crazy flavors. That is a wreck. That is a train wreck, Hartley. It says, it doesn't say Italian brandy. It says made with Italian brandy. So that means they're using, oh, I don't know, some cheap American brandy <laughs> from Kentucky, probably in Italian brandy. It used to say Italian brandy, but somebody must have called them on it. Cheers, Louisiana Beer Review, says Tommy. Thanks. Cheers to you. Kuto Douglas says, I'd like to see a review of Absinthe. You ain't going to see it on this channel. I'm too scared to review it. Oh, I got to contact Douglas. He sent me two beers, and I forgot to tell him that I got the beers delivered today. 
he sent me one called Czech Lager from Czecho, Czechia and a new one from uh, uh, Devil's Backbone. So I got a contact. I knew I was forgetting something. Is Italian brandy the same thing as grappa? No. No. Grappa is like some kind of like unaged great pulp that they make brandy from. It's like real basic. I've never had it. Some people like it. It's kind of like the leftover after they squeezed all the juice out. I don't know. Grappa is an interesting product. I've never seen it sold, but you can find it. If you look around at some exotic liquor stores, you know. <clears throat> My friend David knows a lot about it. I think he was drinking that when they were in the Mediterranean Sea in the in the Navy. Have you tried any beers from Four Hands Brewing Company based in St. Louis? Sadly, I've never seen those around here. Okay, time for the tasting or the nosing first. Okay, so very fruity grapes, grape skins. Really, it's kind of like dark raisins. Some of these are even taste like prunes, but you know they're not made with prunes. They're made with grapes. But uh, it's a kind of strange little nose, like caramel, vanilla. If you never had brandy, it's a different world. If you said, well, I've had whiskey, you got to just wipe that out of your mind. Because whiskey, they're both like, say, 40% alcohol. So you'll have the same feeling, the feeling I get when I look to the West, you know. But um, the taste and the aroma won't won't be the same. Oh, now this one here is much more caramel. Hard to describe. It's got like a um, caramel candy, like a Riesling or Werther's original. <laughs> Crazy, right? They're not made with that. They're just made with brandy. But that hardly uses flavorings. Man, look, I don't know what that is in there. It's natural flavors, but it says like on they used to say on the old Sazerac website with notes of drizzled rum cake. And I'm like, it's drizzled something. But you can find that on some sell sheets like a total wine and more. Oh man, I'm telling you, you could waste eight dollars and get Hartley brandy. It's not really a waste because you only paid eight dollars. That is some bizarre stuff. It is wild. You may as well start at the bottom. It's kind of fun to uh, sip on in a way because you're thinking, what are they thinking? You know, you're thinking, what are they thinking? You know, it's crazy. And they got people buy that stuff every week. And I read the reviews like you can read reviews on Total Wine because they let you write reviews. And they'd be people talking about, I love this stuff. I drink it all the time. And I'm thinking, I don't think you drink it because you love it. You drink it because it's cheap and you're mixing it with Delaware Punch. But these are much higher grade than Hartley. Thank goodness. I might buy some more one day just for the fun of it. The aberrant, you know what I mean? Like the the badness of it. You know what I'm saying? Like the badness can even be fun and interesting. Um, this even has like a chocolate note. You say, you're crazy. You're going out of your mind. Might have gone crazy. But it does have a chocolate note. Tulane baseball is doing pretty good this year. How do you think they will end up this year? I think if they win the next series and they don't do horrible in the tournament. Probably go, they almost certainly go to NCAA tournament. Now, I don't know how long they'll last there. You know, I mean, that's a whole different ball game, right? But uh, yeah, they're doing pretty well. They started off so horrible, so shabby. Now, Southeastern Louisiana, where I graduated, started off hot, hot to trot. And now they can't get out of their own way. Talk about a collapse. Southeastern and University of New Orleans are making like a, ra a race to the bottom. They're in a race to the bottom. Who can collapse the worst and who can do it first? Well, they're pretty evenly matched. They're both going downhill fast. So that's a 
that's bad. And so I'll go to the last series to watch a funeral, be like a funeral environment. LSU, Louisiana State University is, is kind of getting on fire right now. Getting on fire. Oh, so spicy. It's like a spiced fruit product. Now you're watching saying, well, hell, it is a, a fruit product. It's made from grapes, is it not? It is made from grapes. But there's no spices added. So that's the interesting thing. Like, how could it have this spicy taste? Like a spiced dessert. Um, not dessert. Spicy um, fruit cake or holiday cake. I don't know. But it's probably coming from the oak. And maybe the oak is charred. But I mean, I don't think it's freshly charred. Although it could be. Could be. Look on the Ciroc website. Look on the Ciroc website. Very important. They got videos showing about how theirs is special and they really taking care and they're showing them charring a barrel. They're showing a barrel on fire. That's what they do. They squirt alcohol into the barrel. They saturate the barrel with old. It might be old brandy that didn't come out right or whatever. You know, it's alcohol. And that thing will light up. And they'll let it burn. Light, medium, or dark. Now, if they let it burn, 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 it would be what they call alligator char. It'd be thick like the back of an alligator. To put the brandy in that, oh, you're going to get that charcoal barbecue flavor uh, spiciness. Why would they make a video showing them lighting up a barrel if they don't light up the barrel? I don't think they would. They're obviously doing that. Diageo is so rich. It's the biggest liquor alcohol company, you know what I mean, hard liquor company in the world. And it, plus they make one of the top selling beers in the world, Guinness, and then Harp Lager. You think they don't have the money to do char, bro? You know they got the money. That's why I think when Ciroc VS hit the market, some other companies got a little nervous because um, they got the money to advertise. I saw it at Mathern's today, $34.99. But I got it for 29. And they're in a collaboration with a rap singer, pop, really more like a pop music singer. Uh that guy Combs. Call him P. Diddy. <laughs> but you know, Combs, C O M B S Combs. Um whether that makes it sell, I don't know. Wouldn't have any influence on me. Uh, being from Louisiana, are you an apologist for how bad Southern comfort is? I just tried it for the first time and I wanted to die, says Martin Wyant. And what are your top three whiskeys? I don't have a top three whiskeys. I like. I haven't had enough whiskeys to really give a top three. Uh, my experience with Southern Comfort is minimal to zero. Uh, the only Southern Comfort I ever tried in my life was the Southern Comfort Age and Tabasco Barrels in collaboration with McElhenney when they were doing that for a while. And then McElhenney moved it over to um, Dickel. But I think that's about to end and they're going to do some new collaboration with a new uh, um, uh, different whiskey company. I've never had Southern Comfort 80 proof or 90 proof or 100 proof. They make three versions, you know, if you look on their website. I think Southeastern Louisiana needs to win the Southland Conference to go to the NCAA tournament. There's no doubt about that. There won't be an at-large. No team in that conference is going to get an at-large bid. So either whoever wins the conference going to the NCAA tournament and whoever doesn't win it ain't going, which means they're going to get one team. And will they get out of the regional? Probably not. Uh, couldn't agree more. Southern Comfort is hideous. I cannot comment on Southern Comfort, y'all. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> we just tried the 100 proof, abysmal. 
I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, Sazerac, if you get on their website, they brag about Southern Comfort is the greatest thing ever, you know, but what do you expect? They're trying to sell it. They paid $500 million for Southern Comfort when they bought it from Brown Foreman six years ago. That's that's serious money. That's as much as people pay for a pro, pro sports team. That's how big Southern Comfort is. Y'all think Southern Comfort is a joke? It might be bad. I don't know. It might be bad. I never had it. It could be the most wretched thing on earth. I don't know. I know this much, though. It's one of the top selling liquors in the world, liqueurs in the world, whiskey liqueur or whatever it is, liqueur, something liqueur. So somebody likes it. I can't say I like it because I never had it. But I like it if I had it. I don't know. I cannot. I, I, I probably I don't even like liqueur, so I probably would not like it. But I, I mean, I like them to do the little Friday night when I do the, the little Friday night live things with like I did the Yukon Jack. I mean, yeah, it was fine. I gave it a B. It was all right. I mean, I was drinking one little mini bottle. So I didn't have to really like rest on it. Now, my friend David for my birthday gave me these liqueurs. Pickle flavored vodka. <laughs> Oh no, in this other one. So I mean I gotta deal with those some kind of way. I don't wet I don't waste stuff and I'm not gonna sit on it forever. I can assure you that. One of the biggest, that's incredible. It is. There's no doubt about that. Southern Comfort is sold all over the world. As much as we may hate it or like it, whatever the case may be. Um there's three versions, but there's probably more than three versions because they probably have travel select that you can only get at these uh airport stores like i said i had the tabasco version which i think is out of production i'm almost certain it is uh but let's let's get off of southern comfort for right now i don't feel comfortable talking about southern comfort these two brandies they're sweet i mean if you don't like sweet drinks Forget it. You're going to hate it because they're sugary sweet like a raisin. You know a raisin is sweet. You've eaten California raisins, those brown raisins and those golden raisins. You know what I'm talking about. These are spicy. They have wood components like you can taste the oak. Oh, now which one's better? Hmm, I'm having a hard time determining that. You say, well, wait a minute. You paid $29 and maybe $29.99. You paid $29 for the Ciroc and you paid $13 for the Solera, the uh, Fundador. Well, 13 times 2 is 26. So we're talking about over twice the price. And I haven't seen you, you watching me. You haven't seen any indication that one of these is double the, the enjoyment level. I'm agreeing with you. They're both smooth. They actually have commonalities. I said the chocolate, a slight chocolate flavor, the caramel, the, 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 the golden raisin, and maybe dark raisin too. Spiciness and, and whatnot. Yeah. I think we're going to have to go on. We're going to have to take the side. Oh, I hate to do this. Because I paid $29 for this fancy bottle. And it looks pretty, yeah. That's a pretty bottle. It's really pretty when it's full, you know, and it's all rust red. But, I mean, I'm drinking it down. It's got wood here. This is wood. This is not plastic. Uh-uh. That's real wood. Oh, well, maybe that's veneer. <laughs> maybe that's a veneer, you know. But it's nice. It's, it's really beautiful. Like John and Neely said, boy, they went high hat with that. They went all the way. I said, you're right. You're right. Diageo always goes first class. But here's little old Spanish brandy. And you know Spain is a poor country compared to France. France is like, I don't know, like 50 times richer than Spain. But Spain might be a nicer country to live in. I say might be a nicer country to live in. 
And this one has a knight on it carrying a sword. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to have to call this the winner. And why? Because it's way cheaper and it tastes just as good. Listen to what I just said. It's a beautiful embossed bottle, too. That's like, that's not like a patch. That's embossed. The glass is that shape. Two important factors. It's way cheaper. And it tastes just as good. Let's remember this. Way cheaper, tastes just as good. Way cheaper, tastes just as good. Way cheaper, tastes just as good. Is that making an impression upon you? It makes an impression on me. Been drinking a Vian Stefano Vitus for a week now. I love it. Oh, that's a jewel. It'll get you fat, you know, but it's a great one. One of the biggest. That's incredible. Okay. Would you be paying $40 for Ciroc? And oh, you would be. Here's Sinai. So you would be paying $40 for Ciroc in Toronto, where I'm from, laughing out loud. We have a quasi monopolistic government owned alcohol retailer with crazy markups. I've noticed that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Y'all have to deal with that. We're becoming almost as socialist as y'all are, though. So we're losing our freedom as fast as water drains through a colander, I'm afraid. That is really ni a, a really nice bottle. Wow. Big upset today. Ciroc goes down. Didn't see that coming. Um, I had a funny feeling about this because uh, I knew that I knew that the uh, Pedro Domecq Fundador Solero was really good. And Ciroc is really good. I would recommend getting Ciroc. I'm so glad I bought it. But I'm telling you now, I paid $13, which is an aberration. Okay, okay. If you go to a liquor store, you're probably going to pay $17, but I got, or, you know, or $18. But, but I got it for $13. That's what I paid. Fundador is killing it tonight. Good old LCBO. Yeah, Liquor Control Board of Ontario. Fundador has been my go-to brandy since the 1980s. Still loving it, says Dennis Maloney. Wow, since the 1980s, Ciroc is good, says Izzy P, but it's overpriced in my opinion. You're buying the name. Remember, you're buying the name. Crown Royal, Johnny Walker, Budweiser, Jack Daniels. That's a great example right there. You're buying the name. You're not buying the product, okay? I'm done drinking today. That's why I'm watching this as Geary, King of the Dots. Okay, Geary. Now we're going to try to see if I can actually tell them apart, which I'm a little concerned about. Very nice. What are the flaws? What are the downsides? What's wrong with these products? I'd love to know. I would love to know. You, I, I mean, I watch some people come on the internet and do video reviews of Ciroc. And they said things that I thought were outrageous. They were like, it's so strong. It's so bitter. I was like, A, it's not strong. And B, it is certainly not bitter. It has character. It has spiciness. It has caramel notes and all. But bitter? I, I just did not know what they were talking about. The, the name markup is always raising the price. You're right. I'm done. Um, I can go to every liquor outlet in southeastern Louisiana, and they're all going to sell Ciroc brandy. Now, I'm not saying it's moving. It might be sitting on that shelf collecting dust, for all I know. But what percentage of those liquor stores you think are going to sell Fundador Solero? If it was 10%, it would be a lot. I bet you it ain't 10%. I've seen this exactly one time, and that was at Savannah Discount. Now, if it's there, that means it's other places. But I ain't run across them. I haven't seen them. I'm certainly not going to go looking. So everybody sells Ciroc brandy. And there's little old Fundador getting totally ignored. But it's just as good. Just as good. In my booklet, 
He said, well, I ain't reading your booklet. You're watching it. All right. Gary said, oh. Gary says, hi, FD. How long till the internet information equalizes the playing field? <laughs> it's equalizing right now, y'all. All right. Um, oh, missing the game. Um, New Hampshire liquor store is where we find the best selection here. I live in Maine, worth the half hour drive. Hello, man, says Josh. Oh, yeah, I've been to New Hampshire. They have government owned liquor stores, right? I think this video went long, but we had a lot of great comments, so that happens. I think I, I think this is the Solera, the Fundador Solera, because I found I thought this Fundador Solera had a lot more rich dessert like um, even nougat. Um, I don't want to say rum cake, but some kind of little strange little thing like that going for it. And then maybe the Ciroc was cleaner. I don't, I don't mean that in a good way. It was just cleaner, like maybe more like corporate. You say corporate. Don't you know that Fundador is owned by a corporation based in the Philippines? I know all about it. I know all about that. All right. So uh, anyway, I'm going to say this is the Solera, Fundador Solera. And I'm not saying it's better, but it certainly isn't worse. And we talking about. We are talking about a $17 difference. There is no way. There is no way Ciroc is $17 better than Fundador Solera. And I don't even know if it's a dollar better. So you can you can rest assured which one I would buy. You know which one I would buy. But anyway, here we go. <gasps> oh, well, 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 you little sneaky little devil, you. That's the Ciroc that I said had a richer, more complex dessert-like quality. Well, it just goes to show you. That that reinforces. Well, that would actually undermine my contention. But uh, anyway, I said I didn't think one was better than the other, really, in, in the final analysis. So, oh, I'm going to let you pay the extra $17. I'm going to just pay the 13 and get the fun to door every day of the week. I'm going to get the funded door every day of the week, and I'm going to let you pay the extra $17 and get Ciroc so you can show off with your friends. How about that? Izzy says, yes, funded door is readily available in Florida. It's $17.99 in total wine. Right. That's the more normal price, not the 13 that I paid. Have never had Ciroc. Is it VSOP? No, it's only a VS. Only a VS. But it did very well today, and it's the one I preferred you know, by the skin of my teeth. But it is, there is no way, in my opinion, it's worth the extra $17. I mean, you, you might pay because you want to have a pretty bottle that looks better on the shelf, liquor cabinet. I mean, I don't know how fun the door is going to look in a liquor cabinet. It's pretty, you know, old-timey looking. Might have looked pretty in 1974, but you know what I'm saying. But, um, man, I don't care. I'm going to buy the fun the door every day, every day. I'll go get the $13 myself, bro, says Izzy. But, you know, you're probably going to have to pay $18. Some of us like the old time bottles. <laughs> I kind of like the old style, too, really. Anyway, so if you shop around, oh, I guess you'll find some fun to door. And it, let me look on the back of the bottle. They might have the importer here. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Look up Fundador Import Company. They might have a locator tool. But I don't know how easy it's going to be to find. It could be difficult. Ciroc, you're going to find that without much effort. You're just going to have to use more strength because it's going to take more. You're going to have to lift more cash out your wallet. Just pour the Fundador in the Ciroc bottle for presentation. Yeah, right. They're the same color. 
No one would know. And then they would be bragging, saying, I knew Ciroc was better than that garbage fun the door. And it's like, oh, I switched them. Ha ha, you got tricked. All right, thanks for watching this video production. Well, uh, we got one more brandy left. Now, I don't think. This is what I don't think. I don't think the Corbell brandy, California brandy, is going to beat the Ciroc. Now, I can get a liter of Corbell for $15. A liter of Corbell for fifteen dollars, and we're gonna do this at dawn, dawn busters. A liter of Corbell for fifteen dollars. So that is something to very seriously consider. We do have to take that into account, and that that's gonna be a big thing to account for. So thank you for watching this video production.